Good morning. Good morning, for Bishop. Happy Easter. Al-Masih Tham. Christ is risen. But if glory, glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. O Jesus, make us worthy in the abundance of your grace and mercy, to glorify your direction with your heart, to celebrate your victory with holy name, and to proclaim your might with your tongue. We thank you for your love and worship you, crying out, Christ is risen, he is truly risen, to be glory to your Father and to your Holy Spirit now and forever.
give you thanks. Oh, incense of forgiveness, we worship you, for you have brought us close to your Father, enriched us by your birth, purified us by your baptism, and sanctified us by your crucifixion, reconciled us to the Father by your resurrection, raised us by your ascension, and adorned us with the gifts of your Spirit. Now, O oh Lord, accept our incense as we always, with your sweet fragrance, so that our tongues may never cease in giving thanks to you forever.
It's all of you. Because the reverence that I see when I come to this church, the positive feelings I get when I come to this church, and I have goosebumps right now telling you this, I mean it. It makes me, it gets me excited and I want to come back here more often. So I thank you for welcoming me back to my home here in Detroit. And I pray that God blesses you all. In preparing for my homily today, for Easter, I found myself a bit hesitant about what to say. Not because the resurrection of Christ is hard to write about, but I kept trying to come up with something different. I've done homilies on Easter before, and I said, you know, people like to hear something a little different. Uh, you know, what, what different uh, twist or whatever can you put on the resurrection, the death and resurrection of our Lord? And I came coming back to the simple fact that it's not a complex issue. If we look at where we've been for the past 40 days, and for the past 2,000 years, it's a simple, it's a simple process. And it's the same because we are living in a world of constant change. And perhaps when we come every year to this time in our liturgical calendar, when Christ is risen and we're here at Easter, we think, well, maybe we see something different, we hear something different. Because why? Because our whole life is changing. It changes every day. It changes every day. Think about where you were five years ago, or ten years ago, or even five months ago. Perhaps you're living in a different home. Perhaps you're driving a different car. Perhaps you have new clothes. All of those things happen. And I believe today, more than any, we have what's called accelerated change. Why? Because things just don't happen around us. Think about how simple life was when Jesus and his disciples lived. They went from town to town, and that was it. We, we're affected by everything that goes on around the world not just in Detroit, not just in the United States, but if something happens in Cyprus, for instance, it affects our economy. So the globalization, technology, and the internet have really put us in a different place. And it continues to change all the time. So we have to accept the fact that everything changes. But then I said to myself, I'm gonna stop for a moment, think about the changes that took place 2,000 years ago during the 40 days preceding the crucifixion, death, and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus healed the sick, fed the multitudes, raised the dead. Then, after being persecuted and nailed to the cross, he died in order for us to be saved, in order for our sins to be forgiven. Think of the confusion that all those changes must have brought the hearts and minds of his disciples, especially when they went to the tomb where Jesus had been buried, and he was gone. I truly believe that we can say that when Jesus Christ becomes involved in our life, change is inevitable. Now, I capitalize that on this sheet of paper, so I'm going to say it again. I must have thought it was important. When Jesus Christ becomes involved in our lives, change is inevitable. Think about it. On the cross, the world did all it could to Jesus. He crucified him and killed him. At Easter, God did all God could to the world. And the earth shook. And how happy and thankful we must all be that this did take place. For without today, the gates of paradise would never be open for us. This is not something we can really explain. It's something we have to witness. That's why the risen Christ appeared first to his disciples. They had already been witness to his teaching, witness to his healing the sick and raising the dead, witnessing loving the poor and attacking the rich, and ultimately witnessed him being arrested, judged by Pontius Pilate, and crucified. And while this all has the makings of a horrible, tragic, unfair story, God took the cruel cross and made it a means of triumph for all to partake in. Because Jesus Christ appeared first to his disciples, those who were closest to him, but also remember those who were forsaken him, because out of fear, out of their human emotion, they shied away from Jesus. When Jesus got arrested, they ran, they scattered, they didn't know what to do. But he still came back to them. He still came back to them first and appeared to his disciples. So what does that tell us? That tells us that no matter where we are in life, or what we have done to offend God's laws, that God will always be at our side to protect us, to help us, and most importantly, to forgive our sins. So on this glorious day of resurrection, let us fully realize that the day really is simple. That Easter is about the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead and the triumph of eternal life over sin and death. It is for this reason that this day is so important. Heed these words and let us be thankful for the greatest sacrifice ever given that God would send his only begotten Son to die on the cross so that we may have eternal life. Amen. I see you, God. Peace and ice.
در مکان و علاج جمی حاضر مطمئن مامد. یا ربنا ایسوار مسیح نصلی به که هر جمع حیبی خلاص تنام از طلا و جعل توس الزمان یصعد فی جمع سجدی نلاوی نال السماوات. بی جحرس المسحیون لیل و نهار من شریر و قوت. بی اطراف الاطفال و تتحسن النساء و اعفاف الشبان. ومن حكمته يزداد الشيوخ ويتقدس الكهنة ويتطهر الشمامسة بيرفع فضل الديار والكنائس وبه يرحم الموت المؤمنين ويوم فسر في انتهاء الزمان نستكر كلنا في سر سريبك الغافل يا ربنا وإلهنا لك المجد إلى الأبد
774. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and forever.
let my spirit we may call upon you to pray. Our, Our Father, who art in heaven, I will be your name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom come, our glory, our glory, our glory, our glory, our glory. Barak Mawr Abu Lahd, the Lord, the Lord, the Lord, the Lord, the Lord, the Lord, لأننا لا قوة لنا عنا عليها بل نجينا من كل شر لأن لك الملكوت والقدرة والمجد ولكنك الوحيد غير في حق أي القدوس الآن وإلى الأمام. آمين. والسلام جميعكم.